Welcome back nerds, Fino here with a guide for the free anniversary CE ticket. This one lets you pick between 7 old but ostensibly powerful craft essences and to help you with deciding, I've put together a handy little tier list. But before we get to that, you obtain this ticket by completing the first chapter, Fuyuki. The ticket has an expiration date. Two actually. You need to fish this out of your present box immediately and then redeem it before it expires, so don't delay. Let's start things off with an old classic, Prisma Cosmos. This little number gives its equipped servant charge per turn, 8% by default, 10% if you limit break it. The biggest beneficiary here is Ruler Jean, who can engage in some mid-game solo shenanigans, but has difficulties meeting the charge requirements for that immortal playstyle. Eventually, she'll get an upgrade that makes your life easier on that front, but we're not due to get that for another two years. But even if you're not a potato enthusiast, Prisma Cosmos makes a good filler option for members of the proper immortal team. Castoria, Merlin, Lady Avalon, less so Morgan or Himiko, though you could still run Triple Cosmos if you really felt like it. It's not strictly necessary to run the Immortal team, but it gives them some breathing room, especially against fast-charging enemies. For this reason, I'll put it at the top of Situational tier. Lastly, I'll say there are benefits to running multiple copies and limit-breaking Prisma Cosmos, more so the former. My personal rule is that I always want to be able to run a full frontline, so try to maintain a few loose copies even if you have the option of combining them, unless of course you have enough to do both. Our next contestant is Imaginary Around. This gives quick effectiveness and nothing else. I can't think of a single time in this game's history where this was the weapon of choice, and the issue nowadays really boils down to the fact that, if you're running a quick attacker, you either want starting charge to enable loops, or you want Black Rail to cash in on your Noble Phantasm. In lieu of an actual good option, you might be tempted to use this as filler, but this anniversary ticket offers those very same options. So Imaginary Around goes into Barrel Tier. Now why is it called Barrel Tier? That's because you're taking your ticket and ripping it up. Speaking of those options, let's talk about Kaleidoscope. For a large part of this game's existence, K-Scope was the single most valuable craft essence you could have, and it's still in the top tier, though there is another worthwhile consideration I'll get to. In the early game, K-Scope lets you run 3 turn setups with a Waver Engine. Your main attacker has a 50% CE. My weapon of choice used to be Raikou with Aerial Drive. Your second wave attacker runs K-Scope, I was partial to a Grailed Paul Bunyan, and for the first wave you could go with a Rosh and another starting charge CE. Habitrot would be nice, but she's not available in the early game. As you enter the mid and late game, getting one of the two Scotties or Koyanskaya of Light lets you run the quick or buster looping systems respectively. Some high-end attackers can operate with less charge or an Oberon swap, but the default is that you run K-Scope, either fully limit broken or with a servant's starting charger pen skill maxed out. The one issue with K-Scope is that it has no offensive effect, so its contribution to your damage comes entirely from its stat line. Now thankfully it's got a full attack investment. That's what makes K-Scope good and Copescope a steaming pile of shit but this does mean that a zero-star copy of K-Scope is going to feel very restrictive compared to a limit-broken copy, even beyond all the lores you need to spend. And both options have questionable usage in 90++ nodes, where your ability to reach for high damage numbers is generally, though not absolutely higher than the need for starting charge. Nevertheless, because so many playstyles encourage K-Scope usage, and because it remains a good option at almost every stage of the game, I'm putting K-Scope in the must-pick tier, though as you'll find out, it's not the only craft essence in that tier. Next up, we've got Formal Craft. This is Imaginary Around, but for Arts instead of Quick, and that makes a world of difference. Arts teams, to Mamo Comps aside, are way less dependent on starting charge than Buster or Quick setups. Arts is also the card type that focuses on charge generation, so augmenting that with additional Arts buffs can potentially bail you out in situations where your refund wouldn't be quite up to par. That's the case for Formal Craft. Now the case against Formal Craft is that because Arts teams are so freewheeling with their CE selection, you'd have a hard time justifying this over Black Rail or an event CE in most situations. The scales tip even further next year, when we get a Mystic Code with two separate 10% batteries. Usually this is more than enough to make up for any charge shortfall. So with that said, I'm putting Formal Craft at the bottom of Situational tier. Now we come to Volume and Dredgerum, or as I like to call it, Pre-Waifu Tremau. This gives its holder three hits of invulnerability and a bit of flat damage. The latter only really comes up when the developers bring back the crab battle, but the former has some practical use. In the past, we've seen this used with holdout servants, especially ones that have stack-based protection like Ku Cullen. If my memory's on point, the stacks are consumed sequentially and not simultaneously, meaning you can just pop it right away and play for time until your cooldowns are ready. For my purposes, I occasionally run this on mission-critical supports that need to be on the front line but also survive the first few turns of combat. Say if a boss is a time-wasting mechanic that locks you out of your skills or reduces its own damage taken for X amount of time. It's highly situational, but the situation does come up, and more frequently in endgame than formal craft, so that's where it'll go. One final note, only the flat damage and stat cap go up with additional copies. 
The stat in question is health anyway, so you can safely keep volume in her dredge room at zero stars. Our penultimate pick is limited zero over. This is the last of our pure card type ZEs, this time for Buster. I'd argue this is better than Imaginary Round for the simple reason that, for a Buster Servant, hitting your enemies with red cards is always a valid way to play, even at low power levels. That's the good news. The bad news is that, in my book, there have always been better options. If you have both, Victor of the Moon is the preferred option on account of its higher stat cap. That and Buster Servants are about to get much more reliable crit access with the Mighty Chain update, so the crit on Victor will get more mileage. The other bad news is that at endgame, Buster Servants want either K-Scope, Cranking, or Black Rail depending on their use case. There's not really room in that equation for limited zero, and I think you'll find it falls off quite quickly after the early game. For that reason, I'm putting it in Barrel tier. It might be better than Imaginary Around, but I'm not going to invent another tier just to keep Shiro and Sakura apart. They can have the real estate. Last but not least, we have Black Rail. This grants an astonishing 60-80% NP damage at the cost of pinging its user for 500 at the end of every turn. For reference, Heaven's Feel caps out at 50% after limit breaking it. Combined with its elevated stat cap, this makes Black Rail the ultimate offensive option for anyone that can spam their Noble Phantasm. Combine this with Oberon, who can double the effect of NP damage buffs, and Black Rail enables some apocalyptic damage numbers. For anyone that can run it while looping, this is the go-to. Even for single-target servants that don't loop cleanly, it's still often the best option. If you have the choice between running an Involm Pierce Craft Essence and doing Black Rail with a Calamity Jane swap, it's often worth it to take the swap. That's how good it is. It's worse than K-Scope in the early game when your ability to feed charges in question, but the second you start accumulating the big ticket supports, it's absolutely invaluable. We're heading towards a game state where there's a premium on damage, and this is an environment that Black Rail dominates. Black Rail and K-Scope are both must-picks, and unless you have them fully upgraded, I don't think it's worth even considering the lower tiers. So the question then is, how do you prioritize between the two? In order of importance, I'd say that if you have the same number of both, you should take the Grail. If either is one copy away from being limit broken, I'd prioritize that. Black Rail gets a huge power spike, and K-Scope starts saving you a lot of crystallized lures, so it's worth it to chase those completion bonuses. If you have one but not the other, then grab whatever you're missing. Finally, if you have both limit broken, then you may want to consider the lower tiers. That said, it might be worth picking K-Scope anyway in that particular case, since multi-scope is situationally useful like in tower events, where your access to charge supports is highly restricted. But yeah, let me know what you picked, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. Like if you found this video useful, subscribe for more, and come on to a twitch.tv slash Tyson, where I stream every week, 3pm Pacific Time, Friday through Sunday. This Sunday I'll be rolling for a Quaid Brunstead, my awesomely expensive waifu, so if you want to see me slowly transform into Honest Min's Michael, you'll want to stop by. See you there.